Hello everyone, you're listening to The Right Side of Gaming, and today we're going to be talking about some of the broker updates from the last patch. You'll notice I'm in the hacks and unlock section, and this is the part to buy, not to sell. I don't have all this stuff, that would be amazing. And you'll notice, it actually has stuff you can buy now. Oh, it's amazing. So what happened in the recent patch is the devs went in, and they put in a bunch of stuff for each one. And it's going to automatically repopulate. So if you buy stuff, well, eventually it's just going to replace it. Now, if for some reason it happens to lose all of its inventory, they said that they can go in and restock it, but they don't expect to have to do that much, if at all. They also took out the Demir Assassin Booster Pack and the Demir Assassin Class. So, just to be clear, I mean from the broker, they're, they're still in-game and available. You can still get and play the class, and you can still get and buy the packs, but you can't buy or sell them from the broker. Some was saying, well, with the packs, you could do sort of this infinite Empyrean Shard trick where you could buy the packs, open it, and get the Empyrean Shards, and then sell the reward back for you know about the same amount as the pack itself cost and then just buy a new pack so I can see how they might wanna cut that off so the only way to really get Empyrean charge now is to I guess buy packs with Zen as for the class itself well I mean they've moved it to the battle pass everyone's going to have access to it in fact, I will even go in and show you guys real quick. They extended the battle pass. I think it was a couple weeks, and now we're up to 53 days remaining. I'll stop and do the math here at some point. In fact, you know what? Let's, let's do that real quick while I have you guys here. Let's see. It is technically Friday. When I'm recording this, and the weeks reset at on Tuesdays, I believe. So let's see: Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. We have four more days until the reset, and then we have about seven weeks. Okay, so we have seven weeks worth of weeklies, and those are worth sixteen hundred each. Plus 53 days, I'll go ahead and knock it down to, to 52, just because it'll probably have reset by the time you guys are watching this. 52 days worth of dailies, and those I believe are 375 each. So you've got about 30,000 XP, 30,700, left that you can get, and I know, I still have to do my daily, don't judge me. I'll get around to that after this. That means you're going to have about 30, 31 levels worth that you can get all on your own. After that, you're probably going to have to purchase levels if you're really far behind. Uh, but it looks like you can get them for about 200 zen each. And I know you could purchase the premium, the 1500 I guess difference for 15 levels. So you can get 15 levels for 100 each if you go this route, or 200 each if you go the other, which again, if you haven't started, you're probably going to have to buy it. Otherwise, you've got 30 levels worth. I, I think, you know, if you've been playing any, you're, you're probably going to be fine. Let's get back to this broker and take a look at the packs and unlocks. I want to go through what everything is and does real quick just because, you know, maybe not a lot of people paid attention because there wasn't anything to buy, so you didn't really need to know what it was or what it did. I know I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention lately just because it's like, eh, there's nothing there. Why, why should I try bothering to remember it? But we may as well go through it now. The Demir Trait Unlock gives you one of three traits, Might from Unity. Intimidating Roar, and Aether Aggression. Might from Unity is whenever you summon a creature, you're going to get lesser might for 10 seconds. 
Intimidating Roar is whenever you summon a creature with an Enter the Battlefield effect, it's going to apply lesser resistance to nearby enemies for 10 seconds whenever it enters the battlefield. And Aether Aggression is whenever you summon a creature, it gains plus one, plus one for 10 seconds. So this trait, yeah, it's nice to have all these extra traits, but they are definitely a little creature focused. So if that's not the type of deck you like to run, I might wait on this one until, you know, you've gotten some of the other stuff you want. Next we have Interrogate, which you'll notice is a lot more expensive. Most of this stuff is in the 480 to 510 range, some of them a little more, some a little less. But, you know, a couple of them, specific artifact, are spells, which we'll come back to here in a bit, at the very end. And Interrogate are a lot more. Now, Interrogate is a sorcery that says for 8 seconds, the creature you control with the highest power gets plus 2, plus 0. So it's going to buff one of your creatures. Then you're going to draw a spell, and if you control a creature with 4 power more than its toughness, you draw 2 spells instead, which is why it gives a buff to attack your power and not toughness, because it's looking for that 4 power difference. And you're getting all that for 2 mana, 1 black and 1 blue. If you're playing in those colors, it might be worth it to save up for that, just because... You know, blue and black likes draw, blue especially. If you're playing blue-black, I would not be surprised if you're playing the Demir class, which also likes draw, and being able to draw an extra spell or two in addition to getting the bonus might be worth it. Otherwise, again, I think it's one you can wait on if you're not playing blue-black. We have a Ring of Rapacity next. Which is whenever you have a full bar of mana, you're getting plus 100 white mana sorcery potency. And I suspect that's probably one of those that, you know, upgrades. But basically, if you have a full bar of mana, you're going to do some more damage with your white sorceries. And then, of course, you're going to have less mana. So if you're letting it recharge and just doing, like, big spells or at least that big opener, you're going to do a lot. Maybe it's just me. I don't have uh, a full bar a lot just because i'm casting spells throughout the battle it also gives spark recharge speed and mana resist so if you are in a white deck they sorcery focus and you are trying to make the most out of your spark powers maybe um i am a little underwhelmed at the moment for the price but your mileage may differ next we have the demir artifact unlock it's going to give you your choice of Four artifacts. The first one is Blood Soaked Altar, which I know we've talked about before. It's one of those where it's got all that conditional stuff on it where you have to like lose life and discard a card at random. But if you do all that, if you manage to sacrifice a creature and you meet all the other requirements, you get a 5 5 black demon creature with trample. If you are in a black deck, because it also gives you black mana creature potency. And you do have a Sacrifice bent. This is really synergistic. I would not be surprised if you picked this one up. I wouldn't blame you. But if Black Sacrifice isn't your thing, then our next option is Tracing Aromatic. It's just going to be a straight Black Mana Creature Potency and Control Rating. We also have the Mirror Codex. It says, whenever you cast a sorcery greater than or equal to 5 converted mana cost, although I think we're calling that mana value these days, I don't know about in the game, but in the paper version, it's mana value now, your next sorcery costs one less generic mana to cast, and foes gain lesser snare for X seconds. And then you also get a bonus to control rating. This is one of those where it's basically going to reward you for playing big spells by making some of your others a little cheaper and then it gets a, a little control benefit too. White and blue both like that control aspect. Something like green really likes playing big spells and I think most of them all have big sorceries that you can cast. In fact I guess 
green prefers big creatures, big sorceries. I guess it's more of a blue. So yeah, this uh, this fits Demir. I know, I know there's some in black. White's definitely got some big ones. Um, but again, if you're playing a bunch of big costed spells, specifically big costed sorceries, that might interest you. And then finally, your last option is Assailant's Contract. Whenever you kill a champion or elite, you're going to get Lesser Swiftness for about half a second, and the next sorcery spell you cast will reduce the cooldown of your secondary ability by one second. And there's all sorts of stuff that you know you can play around with in the numbers there, because um, it'll affect more sorceries to make your cooldown go down even further. It's a little complex, but basically if you're really focusing on sorceries and your secondary ability, there's some stuff there, but I know not a lot of people are going to necessarily want to work out all the details on that. Next we have Graves of Rapacity. Whenever you kill a foe with your utility ability, you're going to have a chance to create a 1-1 artifact spider creature token for 15 seconds. And then you're going to get some utility recharge to go along with it, which is good because you're wanting to use your utility ability with that one. Honestly, if you are doing a utility focused build this would be a great one i think because you're getting that recharge speed you're getting extra utility out of your utility um wordplay intended we have the demir spell unlock it's going to let you choose between elven ambusher fire dance and light shield barrier elven ambusher is a three mana creature it's two and a green and it has a special ability to destroy a random nearby standard or weaker foe, which I guess gives you a little slightly more crowd control. It's not actually doing an AoE, just affecting a single creature, but it's killing it outright. So you're going to have to balance for yourself just how much you think that's worth. Whenever I pick this up, I kind of skip that one. You have Fire Dance, which is going to deal damage to a random enemy four times per second for 10 seconds. That's the one I picked up, but only because I was running a red-black deck at the time. I think it's also one that... I mean, you could skip over it. It's it's not bad, but it doesn't count as damage over time or anything like that, technically. But Shield Barrier, I think, is going to be a little more useful if you're running a specific type of build. Uh, for 8 seconds, your creature with the strongest toughness takes no damage, and when it ends, it deals damage to your enemies equal to a percentage of the damage it would have taken. So it's like your Pokemon Bite attack. It's not taking damage, and then it just sort of unleashes it all. Except I guess technically Bite takes damage, but I think this is an improved version. If you're playing a deck where you have your creatures taunting, where everything's you know, going to be attacking it, which works out really well in, say, a white-green deck, since my Shield Barrier wants you to use white, then you know that's that's a pretty good option. But again, that's a specific type of deck if you really want to get the most out of it. Next, we have Gauntlets of Rapacity, which has a lot because one of the uh, sort of extra abilities also is a little wordy. But basically, its core modifier is whenever you activate your secondary ability, you have a chance for your lowest percent health creature you control to gain, when it dies, you gain lesser mana regeneration for 5 seconds, and it's gaining the ability to get the mana regeneration for 5 seconds for 30 seconds. I know, it's, it's a little convoluted. Basically, whenever you use your secondary, your creature that's most likely going to die is going to give you some mana regeneration if it dies anytime soon. That's, that's it. Secondary leads to mana regeneration. Okay. And then whenever you drop below 6 mana, you have a chance to gain red mana sorcery potency for each enchantment affecting you for 10 seconds. Now, normally red isn't my go-to when I think of enchantments, but that's maybe because I play a little bit more of the card game. They all have enchantments in here, so I think all the colors can sort of make use of that. But since it wants red mana sorcery potency specifically, you're probably going to want to use it in a deck that 
is using red mana. Then of course you also have to have some creatures that you want to die, which maybe works well with weaker creatures. Um, when I think weaker creatures in red, I think goblins. So I can absolutely see someone picking this up in a goblin build. Next we have Chestplate of Rapacity. Whenever you drop below 30% max health, you have a chance to gain... Whenever you take damage, you gain plus 50 sorcery potency of the mana color the source was for 20 seconds. Okay, so if you get hit by a blue source, like a from a blue creature or from a blue spell, while you're below 30% of your health, you have a chance to gain blue sorcery potency. If it's from a white creature or a white source, you have a chance to gain white sorcery potency. So it's one of those where you'd have to know what's in the mission or ordeal or whatever you're doing so that you know if, what your benefit you're going to get out of that is. So it would take a little bit of planning because you're probably not always going to get hit by something that you have in your deck. Yeah, I can get hit by green sources all the time. But it doesn't do me a whole lot of good if I'm running a deck without any green in it and I have no green sorceries. And then whenever you activate your secondary ability, you have a chance to gain red mana sorcery. Oh, sorry, a... You have a chance to gain red mana buff rating. I'm not exactly sure what buff rating is. Uh, I may have to look that one up. But it sounds like you want this in a red deck, specifically red and something. And how useful the first part's going to be is going to depend on whether or not there's red things attacking you. There are, yeah, it's going to be great. Then finally, we have Suffocating Curiosity. Now, this is one that wants you to be playing blue, because whenever you cast a spell that costs blue, you're going to gain greater swiftness, you're going to be moving around a lot faster, and you're going to deal damage every second to enemies that you come in contact with for three seconds. And you're going to be able to move through enemies. So basically, you cast a blue spell, and you can run really fast through enemies to kind of get away, or to run around them and deal damage, and you're going to be dealing damage to them. Damage is actually going to be multiplied by the number of black mana spells in your deck once you raise up the level. So it definitely is going to get the most out of it if you're running a blue-black deck. So, you know, if you are running a blue-black deck, things like Getting Curiosity and Interrogate are suddenly looking a lot better. We have a couple options that really lean towards red. We have... One that I think worked really well in white-green. We have one that worked well in white. We have a couple of really creature-specific stuff, which, again, works well in things like green, or maybe, you know, if you're going one of those horde modes. Um, you know, I think all decks kind of have some swarm potential in here, or all colors do. So you can probably find something in here that appeals to you, but you might want to stop and think about whether or not it's something that really helps you right now or for something that you plan on building further down the road because a lot of these are kind of color or deck specific. Now, I'm not entirely sure why none of these are in there. I don't know if they've all been bought out and they're just waiting to uh, restock and it's, it just hasn't done that already. In fact, let's um, get out and pop back in just to see... I. I don't know if that's the case, or if it's one of those where, well, that's just the one thing that didn't get, you know, populated where you can automatically buy it, which would make sense, because that is your grand prize. I don't understand why they wouldn't want to uh, pop everything in there. Um, whenever you open a booster pack, your grand prize is this, and you're going to get one of these spells at random. It doesn't list all the spells in a way that we can see them. I don't know why it thinks I can buy 12 when I have neither the gold nor the uh, trade tokens for it, but we'll, 
we'll come back to that, I guess. Sure, I'll figure it out at some point. But, you know, this is going to be all your level 9, or rank 9 and 10 uh, realm spells. So I can see why it'd be really popular if maybe it's just been bought out completely already. Because those are all the spells that people have been waiting on that maybe they can't get yet because they're sort of uh, gated behind these weekly caps in planar mana. So it's like, oh, you have to have all this, you know, red, white, blue, green, black mana to be able to upgrade up to level 9 and 10 in your realm. And that can take quite a while at those higher levels. So there's definitely some incentive for people to just kind of skip over that. That's all I had for today. Thank you guys so much for listening. If you'd like to leave a like, comment, subscribe, that'd be great. I'd love to hear from you guys as to what you would buy first in here. Or if you have bought something... What was the first thing you went straight for once they had it in stock? And if you don't want to do any of that, that's fine too. I understand. Either way, I hope you have an awesome day, and I will catch you next time.